Okay, I hope this looks familiar. We saw this tool in video 41, but in video 41, we simply had 2x2 two two matrix, but now I have expanded it to be a 3x3 three three matrix. And we also had two component vectors, and so we applied the 2x2 two two matrix to the vector and got the result, but now we have three component vectors. And notice on every vector here, I have the third component is a 1. And just for now, I'll be satisfied that that works, and we'll come to why that works later. But we now have, essentially, three-dimensional vectors, although I'm only diagramming or viewing the x and y portion of each vector. We're not diagramming the, the third, or graphing, sorry. We're not graphing the third dimension. Nor are we rendering a 3D scene. This is still a 2D scene. It's very flat on my screen and on yours. So, just like we did in the... In the previous, well, maybe I'll leave that up for a minute. In the previous videos, I can grab this and I can scale on the X. I can shrink it or expand it. I can scale on the Y. Same type of thing there. I can also do a rotate. Remember, we brought this down to 0.7 and up to 0.7 to get our, let's see, what was it? It was cosine, sine, negative sine here, so negative 0.7. And remember, 0.7 wasn't the perfect number, but it was close enough. And then our cosine again is 0.7. And you see we have our rotated figure here. All right, if I connect these, these endpoints, you can see the house. And I'll call it a house. You could call it a spaceship. Call it whatever you want. But there is our image rotated. Okay, but I can't do a translation. We also see how we... Um, change the basis vectors here. So that's all good and dandy. So why did I add this third dimension? Or how does adding the third dimension here allow us to do translation? Well first, allow me to prove that adding this third dimension does a translation. Let me um, let me bring these all back to the identity matrix. I'm going to pause the video and not waste your time. Okay, we have the identity matrix back again. And we have our house shape and it's normal position there. Uh, let me just uh, grab one of these sliders and start moving around. Watch what happens to our shape as I do it. I'm going to grab the X portion here and you see how we can move the house on the X. And if I, these vectors are looking a little screwy wampus for lack of a better term, but notice the house, the house shape is still there. If I look at these vectors as points instead of vectors and I connect them all, that's still our house shape. I can grab the Y portion here and move the house up and down. So now, there we go. All we had to do was add this third column, and we get to translate. Now, there are several ways at looking at why this works. I'm going to show you a very basic reason why. At least I think it's probably the most basic, straightforward reason. But then there's other th reasons, and the homogeneous coordinates, that's, that's definitely a term I need to throw out early. We'll talk about homogeneous later. It sounds like a big scary word, but it's not. Um, but, but for now, what I want you to think of is, is uh, th this is simply just a third basis vector, if you would. You can almost kind of, it almost looks a little 3D if you look at it right. It looks like we're looking at some 3D world and, and our, our vectors are coming out of the screen at us, or maybe they look like they're going into the screen. But it's still it's still two dimensional. All I'm doing here is is graphing the x and y portion of the resulting vectors. I'm not even considering the z's. In fact, look at all the z's there. They just end up as a one here. So let me try to explain what's going on. I'm going to set these back to zero and bring this back to zero. And now we have our our original house. Okay. So so to explain what's going on in what I think is the most simplest straightforward way. You remember uh, as we mess with these two red basis vectors and this is, I hate to say why, because that's technically not mathematically correct. It's it's really the jth component and this is the ith component, but I'll, I'll say x and y. Hopefully that sticks with you. It is, you can, yeah, it's pretty much, nah, yeah. I'm, I'm torn. It's To be mathematically correct, I need to say i and j, but if it helps you to think in x and y, that's fine. As I grab this this x basis vector. Let's go back to the x basis vector. This basis vector is in the x direction. As I grab this, do you remember I did this in previous videos? I'm going to bring this up to a 2. You can see the basis vector here growing to a 2. And as I do that, all vectors who rely on this basis vector double as far as the x 
portion is concerned. All right, we are saying let's let's take uh, this this vector for example, this vector right here. It's it's two two. All right, so it's two times this vector. It's two times this vector plus two times this vector, or better yet, it's two this two. Put it right here. It's two times that basis vector plus this two uh, right here, and there's a two times this basis vector. And then it's also one of these, but I'll just ignore this for now. It's one of these things as well. Well, well what's 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 two of these? Well, there's one. We already got one down there. Let me take another one, and there's two of them. Okay. Ooh, that was almost perfect. Straight line, almost. And then uh, there's two of these. See, it's here's one, and here's two of those. And then if I pick these together up with my fingers and I move it over here, you can see that there's the first one. Here's the second one. And so two of these plus two of these gives us this result of one of those. And so that's all we're doing. Hopefully that's a refresher there as I grab this basis vector and mess with it. Then I'm scaling on the x, but we noticed in the rotation I didn't didn't necessarily had have to grab the the first component of that basis vector. I can very well grab another component, and this changes the y component, if you would, of that basis vector, and so we get results like that. And now all of a sudden we have this z component right here, and if I grab that, that that changes these numbers out here. But you can see I'm not graphing any of that, so we don't really see any visual change but I'll, I'll talk about that I'll maybe not this video but we'll get to it we'll get to it in a, very quickly well that's the idea with basis vectors if I can change the basis vectors then that changes our shape but there's no way for me to change this x this x or this y basis vector to move the shape altogether or translate it I can rotate I can scale but but all these uh, linear operations, if you would, linear combinations of operations, they happen with respect to the origin. But then all of a sudden I, I have this third basis vector, which you can't see, but it's coming right out of the screen at you. And if I grab that basis vector, which is what I'm doing here, if I grab the x component here, you can see this moves in the x. Okay, we can do that with the, the y, if you would. Here's the y, okay, and I can also do it with the z, but since the z is just coming straight out at your face, you don't necessarily see anything. It's just like, like the stick is coming straight out further into your face, so you don't really see that. And and what I'm really trying to drill in your head is, let's go back to this this x basis vector. Yeah, I can scale, like we did before, but more interestingly. If that's a word, interestingly, I can grab any part of this basis vector, and I can make it do other things in this direction. Even though it was the, that basis vector was originally our x basis, I can make it break out of those bounds and do interesting things like that. And if you can grab that one concept mentally, that's essentially what we're doing here with the z basis vector that's sticking out at your face. All right, and to help you see that, I've added this. You can't see it; it's off the screen, but it's a checkbox and if I check it we're going to see this 2D view in 3D so watch what happens I check this and there you go this is actually 3D all right and I can grab again let's let's scale the X all right same as we had before all right we can scale the Y all right but now watch as I grab these I can you see that you see we're moving it Right, we're we're seeing the 3D view of what we're viewing in 2D in this view. Okay, let me bring that back down to zero. What's really neat about this example is I can move the camera around, I can fly around, and I can turn off the various things here. I'm going to say turn off the vectors, turn off the lines, and do you see the red, the red here, the green and the blue? Well, that coordinates with. You probably are familiar with RGB. Well, I just coordinate that with x, y, z basis vectors, if you would. So the red, that is our x basis vector. If we go back to our two-dimensional view, that's this basis vector. Uh, but this basis basis vector, this y basis vector, that's that's this green here. Okay, and then the z basis vector I kept saying was pointing out at your face. There it is. 
literally pointing out at your face. If I click front, it puts the camera directly in front of the scene here. Let's, let's bring the camera in a little bit. But that basis vector, that blue basis vector is sticking out right at your face. That almost seems a little intimidating, doesn't it? But if I move the camera to the side here, it looks like it jumped a little bit. You can uh, very well see our basis vectors. And now you can see that third very important basis vector. Let me steady the camera. You can see that blue basis vector, which represents our, our Z basis. Well, again, let's go back to the 2D view. The example I was showing here with this X basis vector, I don't necessarily have to make it grow and shrink in just the X direction. I can mess around with its components and, and have, you see how these two vectors here, as I go up and down, they're stuck. They are literally stuck on this line, if you would. And so as I as I grab this basis here, you see they're always on that same line. But if we had a shape that we were making out of this, I don't know. Let me let me just connect these two. Maybe this we're looking at the side view of some shape here. Uh, as I grab this, that shape it maintains its shape. I'm just moving it up and down that line. So it was right here, but now I've moved it. Well, now it's off the screen. You can't see. It. Let's. Let's move it maybe a little higher. So it was right where this red line is, but now I've just moved it to where this green line is. Right there. Well, that's the same thing we're doing in 3D. In fact, let's go to 3D and actually witness that. Oh, you see how the basis vector changed? You see the red there? I was changing it in the 2D view. There's our red there, but now viewing it in 3D, it's kind of off its line there. Let me bring it back down to where it should be. Right there at zero. And then, again, that same concept, though, with that Z basis vector, that blue one. Let me grab it, and you notice I can move it up and down. All right, I can move it side to side in the X direction. And it is literally the third basis vector for these vectors. Let me zoom out. And these vectors make up our house. Okay, I can say, hey, show the house here. I can actually turn off the vectors that are making those endpoints. They're still there, and we're just not l viewing them as vectors. But that's our house, and you see the house. If you look, I mean, I'm, we're looking at it at a perspective point of view here. If I can click side here, now we're at a perfect side. And if I could get the camera perfectly aligned with the plane that that house sits on. The house sits on the Z equals 1 plane. All right, that's why these components up here are all one. The house is on that z equals one plane. But watch what happens. Oh, let's go back to the side. Let me bring it in and bring the camera right a little bit. Watch what happens as I mess with that that uh, basis vector there, that z one. I move it up, and the house goes up. I move it down, and the house goes down. And for the exact same reason that let's just bring the vectors in that make up the end the corners of that house and I'm going to take away the house for a minute just so we can see the vectors but as I change that Z basis vector you can see all those vectors are changing with it because they're based their third component is based off that that Z vector there so that's that's what's going on here and in fact uh, watch what I'm going to do just so we can see this better now my camera's shot but but here we go, up, down, up. I can actually bring that Z va basis vector, let's bring it back down to zero there on the Y portion of the Z basis vector. And let me uh, just scale this Z basis vector out. You see the house is getting further and further out with it. I can put the house on. You can see we can move that house out and move it down. You know, now we're, we're moving the house out to the plane 7.45, or we can go all the way to 10. Wow, that's a stretch over there, isn't it? Let's bringing the camera there but see that nice long Z basis vector there and then here I'm gonna mess with it you see it translates the house it's moving the house we can move the house up or down let me click this button which will this one right here we're going to move the camera directly in front of the house and by merely using that Z basis vector I'm able to do a translation okay so that's what's really going on in 3D, and there's some other things to consider. Again, let me throw the word homogeneous coordinates out. We'll get to some things to consider with that. But for now, 
you can think of it as the z basis vector simply moving the house but when we view it in 2d we don't actually diagram or or graph sorry the the z vectors because we can't see them it's two dimensional now we just pretend they're not there but that allows us to do a translation if you would so i'm going to use that uh in our code so that i don't have to rotate the I'm getting emails, um, so I don't have to just do rotation. Not only can I do rotation, but I can also do translation. Okay, and anyway, sorry, this video is getting long. Let's let's uh, change up our code to do that and and uh, talk about some more with homogeneous coordinates and blah blah blah.